Hey, my name is Dan Kimball and I am in Santa Cruz, California. Santa Cruz is a small beach community uh, in Northern California, about 70, 80 miles south of San Francisco on the coast. Right now I'm sitting in the Abbey, which is our coffee house, music and art lounge that's part of our church building and it's open seven days a week and it shut down a little while ago, so I'm here after hours and I'm staring at my Dell. Uh, laptop sitting on this chair in front of me and I still use a PC I'm not embarrassed or ashamed to say I use a PC even though I have many Apple friends it's uh, that are very enthusiastic and I love Apple I love Macs but I can say that uh, if you still use a PC it's still okay and uh, I almost see PC users now almost like new punk rock because you're kind of going against the grain of all the Apple and enthu Mac enthusiasts so basically uh, that's not what I want to say. I do know Kim Meyer out at Indiana at Granger Church out there. She has the same exact Dell laptop as I do. So I, I do think in her creative world over there that being a PC user and still using a PC, that's punk rock to me. So let me get on to what I'm really going to say today. And I just have a couple minutes simply to say a statement. And then I'm going to explain the statement. And it's something I think that is very, very I'm passionate about thinking about these things. And here's the statement. In the church, tradition should never get in the way of mission, or it is a sin. In the church, tradition should never get in the way of mission, or it is sin. Let me explain what I mean by that. When I'm saying tradition, what I mean is that you can develop traditions in your church. Some are, could be from the 1500s, some could be from the 1800s. You can have a tradition that develops in 1992. And it's just wonderful things that we developed as we, as we worship and we have roles in churches. And there's certain traditional ways of looking at things, the roles of leaders, what you do format-wise in a worship gathering, you know, how your church is even organizationally structured. There's great traditions that that even throughout history of the church, it, re it gives you a sense of breadth and history looking back. But if they get in way of mission, I want to question if they are something that God would approve of because people are more important than tradition. So when I'm saying tradition, that's kind of what I mean. There's wonderful traditions, but they should never get in the way of mission. What I mean by mission is this. There is human beings all around this planet that are created in the image of God, and God loves them. Jesus Christ died for them, right? So with that, we should be desperately on mission, desiring with every part of our being that they will come to a saving knowledge of who Jesus is. Now, the even evangelical church neglected kind of a holistic gospel for a while so we have been kind of shifting to focus more kingdom activity on earth and helping the marginalized and the oppressed and that is absolutely part of being what a disciple of Jesus is we have neglect or most churches he neglected kind of the focus on that and what that part of the gospel is and the kingdom here on earth because all we did was say you know we pray to Jesus trust in him so that you get to heaven when you die and then we realized, boy, that was such the uh, off-balance focus. So we shifted this way, right? But now what I want to suggest is that maybe that we have shifted this way, we can't forget that there is eternity. There's these horrific Bible verses, like in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, that talks about people will be shut out from the kingdom you know, from God's presence for all eternity. You know, in the book of Revelation, there's judgment that it talks about. There's eternity and being with God for all of eternity and apart from God for all eternity. So I want to just, you know, you, when you're reading all of the John 10 where Jesus is saying, I come to have abundant life and life to the full, life here on earth. Yes, focus life here on earth. But at the same time, don't forget that there is eternity after. And I believe we have to be teaching about that in our churches to our leaders. Now, what that urgency for me does is it then says, I am now placed in a specific time period, in a specific culture, in a specific city or town in this time in history to be part of leadership of a church. Therefore, I need to say, like, yes, the church may have traditions, the local church, but are they getting in the way of the mission of the good news about who Jesus is to be in the community, in people's lives, right? In, in the barber that cuts your hair, in your, the guy that's in the cubicle next to you wherever you work, you know, in the apartment building that's right across the street that you see them in the parking lot all day. Like the average people all around us, like that sense of urgency, like, Lord, please let them understand the abundant life that Jesus has on this earth, right? This earth. 
kingdom now. That they can join in and help the poor and the oppressed and the marginalized. Like, help out that. And at the same time, oh Lord, I can't imagine the girl who cuts my hair spending eternity apart from you. And I will do anything possible. And if it means breaking traditions, as long as we're not compromising scripture, right? Because I know that I believe, as most of you I'm assuming, in the authority of the scripture, that they're inspired. And so as long as we are not compromising scripture, I think that we need to be rethinking anything like a missionary would for the sake of people so they know who Jesus is. And for me, that can mean anything. It means that I think we need to rethink what a pastor is. Is a pastor just a person who shepherds a certain group of people and that's your role and you study and you do this and you have certain meetings during the week? Or should church leadership be, we are here in a missionary context in a post-Christian world today, therefore our leadership needs to be seeing ourselves as like kind of lead missionaries, equipping and and training others and worshiping and teaching like all the more theology doctrine you know missional skills of being out in the world each week that changes how people view themselves they're not just parishioners they don't just come in and sit in the seats they are people like i am here like this is a missionary training center i am here to be encouraged equipped build community with other believers because i'm serving out in the world on mission so that people will know the saving grace of the gospel and through jesus you know, then also it may rethink your building because your building's not just the church building. Your building really should be the missionary training center, like Compassion International as a headquarters. Your church buildings become like missionary training centers. People come, there's classes, there's worship gatherings. You know, we, the reason we have the Abbey is we said, why do we have this building is Fellowship Hall, just for Christians. We turned it into a, it's open up all week long and there's non-Christians that are coming in this place. You know, they're through seven days a week. One time there's 90 students in here from the university studying during finals. They become friends with the baristas. We're becoming known in our community, you know, in a positive way. And then people start drifting into the worship gatherings. You know, we've had people that have actually put faith in Jesus simply because we've turned our building into more of a community building saying, I think that's how God would want to use our church buildings. You can have Fellowship Hall for just the Christians, or you can turn Fellowship Hall into a... But you know what? You're going to get criticized. Like, we have a black ceiling. Somebody from the older church building, because we started the church four, uh, in 2004, and so our church planned, and then somebody that was in the original church building, they came in and said, look what you've done to this place. This was Fellowship Hall. And they looked up at the ceiling like, that's evil. It's black. You know, and the, the color, it's like satanic color. Colors, you know, what have you done? And I'm just like, but we're on mission. We're on mission. So you may get criticized. If you're on mission, most likely people are going to misunderstand you. You're going to get criticized by Christians generally. But you know what? People are worth it. People are worth it. God loves people. There's eternity. There's heaven on earth. And there's hell all eternity. We must be on mission. So if tradition in your church ever gets in the way of mission, it's a sin. That's what I have to say, and I'm shutting off my Dell PC right now.